pay my respect to the country that I stand on. All power to all of you for coming here and gathering and continuing on what you do all across the country. I won't say much because all has been said. But what I will say is I spend most of my time working in suicide prevention. And in the last six months alone, we buried an 11-year-old, a 12-year-old, a 13-year-old, a 14-year-old, a 15-year-old, a 16-year-old, a 17-year-old, an 18-year-old. And I say that because these people, these children, should have gone on to much more in life, to much more. And why they die so young at the world's highest rates goes back to one reason alone, to what Led said, to the crime of having been born Aboriginal on their country. In the end, it is racialized. It is racism. You can talk all the bullshit in the world of substance abuse, of alcohol abuse. That is a relief from the tumult, the dark places that we pummel them into. 7% of the Kimberley is homeless. Outside natural disasters and civil strife, that is one of the world's highest homelessness rates. 7% of that 7%, 100% are the first peoples of the Kimberley. What I've described in the Kimberley is also the far north Queensland and to various degrees right across this whole continent. But the more west, the more west you go across this continent, the more the hits on the first peoples, the more racist it gets. And the mother of all these statistics, the mother of all these hits is Western Australia. And don't take my word, look at the narrative. The highest arrest rates, the highest jailing rates, the highest homeless, homeless rates, extreme poverty, Western Australia. One in 13 of all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander males in Western Australia is in prison today. From a racialised lens, from a racialised lens, from a racialised lens, that is the mother of all jailers in the whole world. Yeah. Eight percent. The police, the police who often come to me through their police union for help to campaign, for instance, with the custody notification service. In the one year, they issued 10,000 move-on notices to first peoples in this state. In the one year in 2013, 10,000 move-on notices, and there are less than 80,000 first peoples there is the right to conscientious objection. There is the right to conscientious objection. I do, I do sit on government boards, but I am who I am at the cold face, also at that engagement at the government level, because who you must be is 24-7, not part of the time. The language that we speak at the cold face must be spoken at all levels. Always. Unity, unity is about those who compromise the truth to come across to the premises of those who will never compromise them. When I said, when I said that the mother of all jailers is Western Australia and Australia of our first peoples from a racialized lens, well, where it hurts most with the removal of children, I can't find a statistic in the world worse than Australia's for the removal of children. In New South Wales, one in ten of all Aboriginal children have been removed from their families. One in ten. One in ten. But what it will take is a cultural shift because it will happen no else, no way else. We do need to get the information out right across the country. We do need to keep on coming together. We do need to set aside the small divisions and come together at the big picture. Come together on the big message. Come together in numbers. That's right. The homelands, tens of thousands have had this government now backpedaling. We're not there. That journey isn't over. This government now by stealth, by that dirty word of consultation, by that dirty word of consultation, that tricky word, wants to consult about which communities will stay open and which will not. It's a con! Consultation means communities will close. Where in the world, where in the world do you get any community raised? Do you get any community shut down? Only in Australia. Doesn't happen anywhere else. Doesn't happen anywhere else.
even if there is natural attrition and people migrate, people want to leave. Waves of migrants came to this country, as they have all over the world, and their villages and towns may not be what they were once, in numbers or in services, but their houses are there, and their heritage is there, for their grandchildren, their great-grandchildren, their great-great-grandchildren to go back to. And yet we want to deny this in the 12th largest economy on the planet, second wealthiest nation on the planet. We want to deny to people to go back to their country. We want to raise communities as we did in Bulgari, in the Kimberley where 62 homes were raised to the ground. A beautiful place, a beautiful place that people cannot go back to. There's always more that we can say, but what we must do is take what we were saying here to many, many more elsewhere and keep on coming in numbers and keep on chasing down the justice. Because, as Les said, this is a pressing issue. This is the issue of our times. The suicides, the child removals, the land grabs, the monetization of the land so the land can become vulnerable and be lost for perpetuity. The right! Much respect to all of you, much love. And though often I sound like a pessimist, I'll fight the good fight to the end of days. And our days under the sun, however many they are, do not fear what can be done to you. Do not fear persecution. Fight fearlessly. Thank you.